I want you to imagine something. Are you ready? Imagine having an endless swarm of over 15 lightning spears perpetually one-shot shredding everything around you while granting you unlimited power! Well, actually, stop imagining it because that's reality today. Hello, my fellow sorcerers! It's time for one hell of a both fun and powerful spin on everybody's favorite sphere of crackling thunder. This is lightning spear ball lightning, and you may be asking, what lightning spear always kind of plays a part, it comes out with unstable currents, and you know, a lot of variants have it on your bars too, it's, you know, it's, it's a thing. But what if it was really a thing? You see, we have all of this crackling energy just lying everywhere when playing ball lightning. It gives us mana and, well, the literal crackling energy pulses, but what if it could also do a lot more? than that. For example, the Lightning Spear Enchant, which gives a Crackling Energy Pickup a chance to spawn a Lightning Spear. Now, why does that help? Well, two reasons. Number one, it means you always have multiple Lightning Spears up, which means they're always surging ahead of you into the next room, killing enemies, stunning enemies, and essentially making you nigh unkillable because everything is always locked down passively. When you press lightning spear, the room gets stunned. So imagine having permanent multiple lightning spears that you don't have to press. The room gets very stunned, and so does the next one, and the next one, and uh, the next one. And on top of that, the lightning spears themselves start critting for 100-200k, which is almost a pulse of ball lightning, which is very impressive, and again, will just one-shot tear through most content, again, without you having to do anything. Thing. But by far the most impressive part of this, and reason number two, is that little single skill that goes by the name of Conjuration Mastery. For every single one that's up, you do 3% multiplicative more damage. With 15 lightning spears up, that is 45% more multiplicative damage. I cannot express enough how big that is, so I'll put it in terms of Talrash's ring, which is our single biggest damage granting item. It's like having another Talrash's ring equipped. Or at least, you know, a three stack one, but still, that is ludicrous, and it makes your boss killing power, as if we needed more of it, so hilarious on top of everything else, with all of these lightning spears flying around doing extra damage, but more importantly, making your ball lightnings up to nearly 50% multiplicatively stronger. It's just a super cool and fun way to leverage the crackling energy that we're producing like crazy into both more survivability, more damage, and more comfort because now you're just automatically killing and locking down everything along the entire way through a Nightmare Dungeon. And when your main goal in High Nightmare Dungeons is mostly just to get to the end for the Glyph XP, this lets you do that so easily because you're just running through, picking up energy, spawning spears, they're stunning and killing everything, and you just don't have to think about it while you mosey on to the final boss. It's a really neat take on a ball lightning and gives you a really flexible way to play it that has a fair amount of strengths your regular one doesn't. Now, your regular one is still, of course, you know, pure peak ball lightning, and you do have to give up the chain lightning enchant, so there is definitely pros and cons, but hey, I think it's really interesting just how many ways you can spin the greatest skill and build in the game. So, if you are sold on lightning spear storms, Let's get to brewing, said Storm. In a shocking turn of events, we're gonna start with the skill tree for the 27th time this season. <laughs> Okay, two points in to Firebolt, and that makes up our first enchantment slot for all of the burn synergy. It's just too much damage to lose when we don't need another enchantment to take its place. 
Yes, I will be going a little bit quicker as we are using the skeleton of the best ball lightning build I presented with you guys last week after we got Tell Rashes, so stay with me. One rank into Devastation, three into Dominance for the 9% Multiplicative. We oftentimes have enough mana to make that more than worth. In fact, most of the time. Grab your Flame Shield and then just get the movement speed for speed clearing. We don't need any of the extras so we can save the point. Teleport to your damage so we don't go splat in tier 90 plus and grab all of your glass cannon because we are tanky enough to just to get the free huge damage increase one rank and attunement so it can happen and then on we go the usual double defensives of don't die and then conjuration mastery the real star of the lightning spear show for the constant stacking multiplicative damage for every spear of which there is a lot of them. We get Ice Blades for our source of Cold Frost damage for Tal Rashes, and then all five ranks into Lightning Spear as we actually do want it to do as much damage as possible, because it surprisingly hits very hard and we have enough of them that bumping it up is worth it. Get Enhanced and then Invoked. Now, Invoked is for dungeons and the open world content and basically anywhere you're fighting a lot of random trash mobs. This is great, it locks them down, it makes them just wait stun for you to plop ball lightnings and yourself on their face and it keeps you alive it's brilliant but if you are going against a boss Duriel or Lilith or if you can be bothered at the end of a dungeon for the dungeon boss switch to summoned as we then will be summoning 160% multiplicative stronger lightning spears from all the crackling energy that we're picking up and let me tell you yeah, that is a noticeable increase in damage, so it is worth the time to swap. Anyway, over to Mastery, get your Devouring Blaze for the extra crit chance, play into the Flame Bolt Enchantment, and then, yes, Ball Lightning. Five out of five, down to the usual Wizards for that Sea of Crackling Energy, which we are taking major advantage of now. Get three out of three Static Discharge, just to have even more Crackling Energy, for even more spears and then yes the mana restore to keep spamming out ball lightnings this by itself is enough to give you near infinite mana to your ultimate to get the unstable currents and prime into supreme and then lastly causing currents to electrocution and then actually lastly sorry I just lied to you we get overflowing energy to reset the cooldown on lightning spear as quickly as possible as well as the usual teleport and ultimate and actually actually lastly sorry for lying to you twice we get our final enchantment slot which is yes the lightning spear chance to summon it when we get a crackling energy so that's all there is to it nice and easy so in terms of playing it i mean yeah it's ball lightning so do the ball lightning things use your ice blades on cooldown to get your stacks of tell rashes use your lightning spear on cooldown and then spam out your ball lightnings while teleporting through the dungeon onto enemies, stunning them with raiment, using your flame shield whenever you need more na mana or you're in a dangerous situation, and then unstable currents whenever there's a particularly large group of enemies or you are dealing with a boss. And then, yeah, I mean, just look at the uh, lightning fly. We went up to 18 lightning spears there, and just seeing them do their thing is so satisfying. And that's really the essence here. We all always have this crackling energy while ball lightning in and we make it work. Yes, we do give up the usual chain lightning enchantment, which means giving up the accelerating aspect and uh, the static surge legendary node that restores mana, but we don't really need the mana restore and we're already nearly attack speed capped anyway, so it's not actually a huge loss for a fairly hefty gain. Just being able to walk on to all of these, look, and then just summon three lightning spears we're doing nine percent multiplicative more damage and this just happens passively while you move through the dungeon over your crackling energy as part of the core playstyle is collecting your crackling energy while spamming balls in order to get mana to keep spamming balls it just naturally plays into itself and gives you this consistent bump that you don't get otherwise more damage from the spears and more
more damage because of the spears. So with that said then, let's actually look at our gear, our aspects, and all of that good stuff. On your dagger, and I say dagger specifically because it's what you should have, the damage too close is much better than lucky hit, we don't really need lucky hit in this build, you want conceited. We essentially always have a barrier, and this is big damage because of it. Then, uh, gravitational, uh, the aspect that makes it all function to rotate your ball lightnings, that is mandatory. And then, elementalists for more crit damage when we cast them above 100 mana, which we will be doing fairly consistently. Outside of just how much mana comes in from the crackling energies, we are just sat in this version at nearly 160 mana, which, yeah, gives you a lot of room for triggering elementalists, and that is really, really good. On your necklace, is where your disobedience goes to stay alive. It's what turns this not enough for tier 100 amount of armor into enough armor for tier 100. And then on your helmet, ever living for that extra little bit of DR we need to not get one shot in end game hard content. And it is always on because enemies are always vulnerable. And then finally, the swap that I have made in replacing accelerating, which we can't no longer use, is splintering energy so that at half the time when we cast our lightning spear, we get two lightning spears. Now, this is more a thematic choice than anything. It's basically translating to a 1.5% multiplicative damage increase and the extra damage from the lightning spear. You can, of course, swap this to more vulnerable damage while you have a barrier or something more directly damaging, aspect of control even. But I think it's nice to really push the theme and have the extra lightning spears actually go zipping around the place. And hey, if you're in the boss killing version of it and you're stacking up your 100 and at 60% damage summons, doubling that and having two lightning spears this amped is kind of ridiculous. So it does have that going for it. But, as I say, you can use whatever aspect you want here. Then, for the unique, so we have Esu's Heirloom, we want the extra crit damage, we want the extra crit chance, and we want the mana cost reduction and the movement speed, it's pretty damn perfect. Extra 13% permanent chance to crit that only ever goes up is so good. Tibalt's Will for the mana regen, every time we flame shield or teleport, it really keeps us on top of things, coupled with the crackling energy, and the extra damage is huge too. Rain as always, group, stun, kill, everything is good, uh, arguably the best unique in the game that doesn't have uber in front of it. And then uh, Tal rashes for that just permanent passive up to 60% multiplicative damage increase with that all-powerful non-physical damage affix that does so much to us. This thing is still, I can't believe how nuts it is. Then uh, we uh, talk gems and your affixes and such. You want more crit damage to vulnerable on your weapons, health on your armor, and armor on your jewelry. Affix-wise then, you are looking for critical strike chance, critical strike damage, attack speed, movement speed, cooldown reduction, ranks of Devouring Blaze, Mastery, and Glass Cannon, and then resource generation along with mana cost reduction. Then we get things like vulnerable damage, damage to close enemies, lucky hit chance, intelligence, just general damage increases that are certainly fine. Vampiric Powers uh, this time around is well as follows. The usual duo of Accursed Touch for constant vampiric curse on everyone, which then feeds into Prey on the Weak, so everyone is always vulnerable, and we do more vulnerable damage. They are very solid and would take a lot to displace them. Ravenous to cast 60% more ball lightnings and for them to pulse 120% faster. What's not to love? This thing is broken in, again, I say this every time, but it really should be stressed. Every build that doesn't channel, nearly. Then we go to Infection for that poison damage for the fourth stack of Tell Rashes. Certainly worth it. And then lastly, Feed the Coven. We have so many lightning spears up all the time. The 10 mana boosted by resource generation coming in for them hitting things is great and the permanent extra 10% multiplicative is also great though this one you can swap for more tankiness if you need it something like sanguine brace it is your more flexible slot 
All that remains then is the Paragon board, which actually in this is quite fun. We get to use a board and a glyph you probably don't really ever see. So, starting at your base, follow me point for point, and we're off. Get your non-physical damage along with your all resist here at the start, and we are saving points where we can, so things like this are pruned. We go up to the glyph slot, where you will put elementalist, the extra 15% multiplicative, and the amp to your non-physical damage and all resist, yeah, it's just perfect. Get said non-physical and all resist, and then head up to our enchantment master board. Now, I would love to get this if I had more points, but a 10% chance increased by 20% for the lightning spear just isn't worth the investment to go all the way over to it, sadly. So we get the usual trifecta of elemental balance, elementalist, and ruinist for colossal amounts of non-physical damage like this up the middle and then we also get the all resist and in here the glyph is reinforced as usual with the permanent 15% DR for our permanent barriering it's really nice and the amping the non-physical also really really nice across then into our burning board burning instinct for our flame bolt burning synergy and the usual suspects apply cinders for the damage smoldering embers for the not dying and this cluster here for even more damage the glyph is is destruction for that colossal amp of your crit damage. Get as much dex as you can once you have finished doing the rest of the board. Sadly, I don't have enough points to get literally all of it in this version. Then we go down into a new board, Elemental Summoner. Yes! Arrange it like this then, so the reservoir is at the top left here, and this gives us more maximum mana, which is really nice for Elementalist casted extra crit ball light and the extra life is also kind of nice on Reservoir itself. It also is on the way to down here the legendary node to make the lightning spear 22% multiplicative more effective too. Now, if you weren't going all in on the gimmick like I am doing, technically you could skip this board and uh, do uh, something else with the points, but I think it is just too on brand for the setup here, the Storm of Lightning Spears, to not to grab, so yeah, you can have a little bit of flexibility with this. Then we head down through Conjurer for more damage to our Lightning Spears, grabbing the extra as well, and then over to the glyph where we put Conjurer! Yeah! The extra damage isn't really too important, but the 20% increased duration, i.e. 20% increased stacking multiplicative damage from our skill tree duration, is really, really nice. Having those lightning spears live that little bit longer makes a big difference, and we activate it with Erudite 2 for the extra intelligence. If it was level 15, I could activate it with this intelligence here, and then not get this one, but alas, I have not leveled it yet. Over to the right then, where we get our static surge board. Of course, the lightning spears stun, our raiment stuns, it's just very nice to have, and arranged like this then, we immediately get an extra load of maximum mana, which is why we have so much in this setup, to then take us across to the glyph slot, which will be flame feeder. Essentially mandatory if you're going to use your flame bolt enchantment, it's one of the reasons it's so good, and then we also grab incapacity for that damage to stunned while we're here, we don't need Electro, which lets us then go straight down into our final board, the Vulnerable Frigid Fate board. This node here is uh, what we aim for initially, and it's powered up by all of the non-physical damage, including our ring, to be at 25% multiplicative, which is really, really nice. Then we go all the way around through weakness, get the extra vulnerable damage, and then our glyph here is a dead finally for the increased ball lightning size and we get that with a minimal amount of intelligence to activate it by uh, finishing with chilling. So there you have it, the full board for conjurer ball lightning with all the lightning spears. If you choose not to get this middle board then honestly just using the points to fill out the other four boards is definitely a viable way to go. And yeah, we are done then. A lovely way to use the crackling energy we're picking up constantly even more. Not just mana, not just the pulses, but more lockdown, so survivability, and more damage from our conjuration stacks, and we just get to see
see and feel the usefulness of this endless swarm of lightning spears just tearing everything apart and chain stunning it and it's really really fun and I think it's a really interesting way to play ball lightning and hey we always have ice blades up too for tal rashes so that just adds another stack as well it really does work out and I had a lot of fun both playing it and putting it together for you guys let me know if you give it a go how you enjoy it and well let me know what else you would like to see sorcerer wise before this season is done for now like you enjoyed this subscribe and hit the bell for more consider supporting the future of the channel on patreon down below and until we meet again a good Bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye